Hey everyone, Sean Stevenson here, author of the Throne series, and today I have another Readsy Discovery book review for you. So I have really been enjoying working with Readsy Discovery. They are a company that really tries to highlight indie authors and their books. And so Readsy Discovery will put the books out for reviewers to pick up and read. And so I chose this one, The Last Indigo and the Beast of Epicera by D. Lynn Robinson. And okay, I have a lot of thoughts about this book. I'm gonna start off by saying, I enjoyed reading it, but I have some things that I want to say about it because I think it will help. So, first of all, what is this book about? The Last Indigo and the Beast of Epicera is a book about a kid who starts seventh grade like maybe many of us did start seventh grade, or if you are a seventh grader, you probably understand this not knowing anyone, wondering who am I going to be friends with, how is this going to work out, where am I going to land on the social status order here, and what's going to happen to me as I enter the seventh grade. And Indigo is a kid who has entered seventh grade in Arizona and doesn't know anybody. And soon he starts to discover that there's something strange about his life. He actually doesn't really remember much from his past, and him and his mom live in kind of a weird, rundown house, and there seems to be this light glowing everywhere he goes. And soon, when a local VR company takes his class on a field trip to the VR station, Indigo finds himself transported to another world where people seem to know who he is, but he has no idea who they are. But the thing they know about him is, he is not the nice guy. So that's how this book starts out. Indigo is wondering who he really is and trying to discover himself through that process. Now, here's some things I got to say about this book. This book is a sci-fi book. It is not a fantasy. So it could be easy to look at the cover of this book and think it was a little bit of a fantasy book because it looks like there's some sort of dragon creature on the front. And obviously there's the beast of Epicera. So kind of wondering, is this a fantasy story? This is a sci-fi story. So I think if you know that going in, it's going to help. I actually thought it was going to be a fantasy story when I started reading it and kind of went into it with that kind of mode. And so when it kind of shifted towards some science fiction type stuff, I thought, oh wait, I gotta reframe how I'm reading this because this is a sci-fi book, it's not a fantasy book. The other thing I think you need to know going into this book is this is a coming of age story. So I have to admit, I don't always love coming of age stories. So they're not always my favorite. I kind of skip them because I find them a little bit slow paced sometimes. And I would say that this book is a little slow paced. There is action and there is a lot of mystery going on and the sci-fi elements are all there, but it is a little slower paced. And so that kind of took me a little bit out of it and I had to reframe it once again. And then when I realized about halfway through, oh, this is a coming of age story set in a sci-fi world. That framed everything for me and I feel like I was much more able to enjoy the book and explore what was going on. I will say Indigo, without spoilers, Indigo discovers that he has this power that he did not know he had because he can't remember his past. And I thought it was really intriguing the stuff that he could do with this power. And I think D. Lynn Robinson really fleshes that out very well in a very interesting exploration of the power that he has. I don't want to say much about it because I don't want to give it away because this is a spoiler free review. So. Indigo's power is really interesting how he explores it, how he discovers it, and what he does with it and can do with it. I think too the other thing that was really well done here is you do not know who to trust. Because Indigo really doesn't know much about his past, when people show up saying that they know him, you have no idea as the reader who you can actually trust. And Robinson does a really great job painting those characters as, well, maybe they're trustworthy, or maybe they're not. Well, but maybe they could be, and it kind of goes back and forth. It reminded me a little bit of the best parts, in my opinion, of the Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl, the very first Pirates of the Caribbean movie, where in that movie, you really did not know if Jack Sparrow was a villain or a hero or somewhere in between. You kind of the whole time were wondering, wait, 
who is Jack Sparrow really? Is he a hero? Is he a villain? And it just kept flipping back and forth and back and forth. And that was one of the things I loved about that movie. And that is one of the elements here. The side characters that show up that know Indigo, you do not know who is good, who is bad. Maybe they're all good. Maybe they're all bad. You have no idea. I do think one interesting thing about this book, though, is there is the absence of a main villain. And... I know not every book needs to have a main villain. I like books with main villains. I think they're a lot of fun, whether it's like a spooky book with a creature of some kind or a monster or a ghost or things like that, or a fantasy book or a sci-fi book that has like a super big bad. Now there is a villain that is talked about throughout the book. And this villain, you actually also are not quite sure, are they actually a villain or not? But then at the very end of the book, and I think this is the third thing that's really important to know about this book, The Last Indigo, is that this is the first book in a series. There's going to be more in this series, and that made me think, okay, this is really an introduction to get us going, to like lay the groundwork for these characters, have this coming of age kind of story for Indigo. And then in the next books, we're going to move on to explore more things. So I thought that was actually, that would have been very helpful to know going into this book. So let's talk about characters for a second. I do think the characters here are well done. And I think that is actually the strength of Robinson's writing is Robinson's really able to paint these characters in a way that makes a lot of sense. They feel real to life in a lot of ways, even though we're dealing with a lot of science fiction elements. These characters pop off the page in a really good way and you're really invested emotionally. I would actually say when I was wondering like why is this book so feeling so slow in the first half, Indigo's character was really one of the only things that kept me going because I kept thinking, oh, this is really great. I really like his character. I want to see what happens with him. I want to know more about what's going on in his world and like why he feels the way he does. And he's a very complex character. I think especially when he starts to remember some things from his past, that makes him very complicated. And I thought a very interesting protagonist and one that you don't normally see in a lot of books. This book actually in some ways reminded me a little bit of the characterization of the Baudelaire orphans in the Lemony Snicket's The Series of Unfortunate Events, who if you follow... Okay, spoiler for that book series. If you've never read it, uh, it's been a long time. So here we go. But in that book series, the Baudelaire orphans, they start off very, very innocent. And as they move along, they are forced to do things in order to be safe that maybe would be seen as criminal, like stealing things, doing things like that. And so they're very complicated characters by the end of that series of Unfortunate Events series. So, and I think that this is similar. Indigo is a very complicated character who has a lot going on. He has some good comic relief sidekick characters as well in KZ, not KC, KZ. <laughs> and I thought KZ was really funny. It was a great sidekick character for Indigo. A good foil to Indigo's real, like, kind of... Not brooding, but like curiosity about like what's going on in my life. There was a good, it was a good juxtaposition with that kind of character. So that I thought was also really well done. I will say though, in the plot, there is the fatal flaw of a lot of authors who sometimes stretch out suspense by doing things like, I can't tell you the rest right now. You're just going to have to wait. I can't handle telling you any more of this. And as the reader, we know there's more and we're kind of sitting there thinking, okay, just get on with it. Like one time of that is fine. But then after that, you got to spill the beans because you can't stretch out the suspense forever doing this. And that does happen a couple of times in the middle of the book. But finally, when we do get some answers about halfway through, it is satisfying. And I think, like I said, Robinson has created a very interesting world. There are a lot of ancillary pieces that are going on here and different characters that have a lot of different motivations that come into play and leave you at the end of the book with some mystery. There were some things that I left the book thinking, ooh, wait a minute, what is going on with that person? 
What's going on with that plot line? What is going to happen now that we know this? So there was some good stuff that was built upon here, and I would be interested to read a sequel. I do think a sequel would be interesting to read, and I would like to read it and see what happens to Indigo and follow along. So I think if you like sci-fi books that have a coming-of-age element, this is the kind of book for you. There is plenty of good sci-fi elements here. There are a lot of coming-of-age pieces to this book as well, and if you love those two things, this is exactly the kind of book that you would probably really like. I think if you can get past a couple of those plot things, like stretching out the suspense by just saying things like, I can't tell you right now, it's too much. If you can get past those things, then I think this will be a book you really will enjoy. For me, I would give this book a three and a half out of five stars, mainly because I thought it was good, but I recognize that this is not my bread and butter kind of book, if that makes sense. I always think like different kinds of books, this is one of those books that it's not technically bad in any way. It's actually really well written and I thought really well done. It's just not exactly my favorite kind of book. But a person, like I said, who loves sci-fi and coming of age stuff, they are going to eat this book up and love it. It is that kind of a book that just will sit with people. And I will admit, Indigo was a great, compelling character. And I think, like I said, was the best part of this book. Okay, I do have to say one other thing. And if you want absolutely zero, zero spoilers, skip ahead like 30 seconds because I want to talk about one tiny thing. It's not anything major spoilery to the plot, but to me, it was one of my favorite parts of the book. Okay. Last warning, skip ahead if you don't want this. Okay, here it is. So there is in this book, this dog character that is so cute. <laughs> I, the whole time was like, can I adopt that dog? I want to adopt that dog. I can't tell you more about the dog. It will be too spoilery, but let's just say that is like the animal companion that every main character will want to have. It was so good. I loved it. Anyways, all right, back from spoiler territory, even though it wasn't really that spoilery. So this is definitely one that I would say check out. It's coming out very soon as of the recording of this video. Check out this book, The Last Indigo and the Beast of Epicera by D. Lynn Robinson. It is definitely one, like I said, if you're a sci-fi and coming of age fan, this is the kind of book for you. So until next time, everybody, keep reading. Bye.